Halo teman-teman, apa kabar? Selamat datang di channel saya Gloria Angelin. Semoga kita semua dalam keadaan yang baik dan sehat. Di video saya kali ini saya akan menjawab pertanyaan dari Danang yang ingin tahu seperti apakah militer di Amerika Serikat. Maka itu saya mengundang Jackie Chan yang pernah mengabdi di Angkatan Udara Amerika Serikat. I collected a lot of questions. Are you okay. ready? Yes, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> One of my favorite places I've ever visited was Bali, Indonesia. So oh, yeah. This is before I was in the military. I was a flight attendant for five years. And that was the most popular route that everybody loved to work was the Bali route. Jackie, could you explain to us what's armed force? Sure. So in the United States, armed forces consist of four military branches. So the oldest being the Army. Then we have the Air Force that came from the Army. And then we have the Navy and then the Marines, which is sort of kind of falls under the Department of the Navy. Coast Guard used to be part of the armed forces. I believe they're now under uh, Department of Homeland Security. Before, they used to be Department of Transportation. But so Coast Guard is sort of um, a military force. Now we actually have an, a new military branch, the Space Force. But that's a very, very young service. So I was in the Air Force. I entered the Air Force in 1994. I was in the military for 21 years, so I retired in 2015 as a lieutenant colonel. And my career specialty was aircraft and munitions maintenance officer. And then about mid-career, I got a secondary specialty, which was, we call it a foreign area officer. And my specialty was Northeast Asia, specifically North Korean issues. Uh, was that like your own will or is it the conscriptions? The United States has a completely volunteer force, no conscription at all. I think there was a conscription back then, till 1973. Right, so when we had major wars, we did have a draft. Of course, Vietnam was the last time that we had a draft. But ever since Vietnam, um, it's been strictly volunteer. Is it hard to get into the military? Does anyone need to bribe to get into? I think it's fairly simple. There's a difference between enlisting and then going through a commissioning source. When you're enlisting, you can go as early as 18. If you get your parents' permission, you can go as early as young as 17. For officer training school or to become an officer, you have to uh, get commissioned. And there's three ways you can do that, either through officer training school or officer candidate school, depending on the service, they call it different things. Another way is to go through one of the service academies. So we have West Point, and then we have the Air Force Academy and the Naval Academy. And then there's also a Merchant Marines Academy where you can get a, a cross commission to come into the Air Force. And the third way is ROTC, usually affiliated with the different you know, universities throughout the United States. You basically get to experience normal college life as opposed to going to a service academy, but then you do leadership training and summer training and then when you graduate college, you become a commissioned officer. Is there any age limit to be in the military? Oh gosh, I forgot what it is now. I think you have to be younger than 32 to join, I think. But you know, they always need medical professionals like doctors and nurses. So if you're older than that and you have a professional training degree or you're professional already, then you might be able to still join. Can a pregnant woman be in the military? Actually, when the Air Force called me and told me they had a slot for uh, joining the Air Force, um, I was pregnant at the time, I couldn't go. So what they did is they gave me a medical deferment. When you're in the military, if you become pregnant, you don't have to leave. Um, you stay and the military takes good care of you. You know, you have your, your baby basically for free because all your health care is so covered, which is great. you still get salary for that? You still get paid during that. You're still on, on the clock and you get paid. Um, and then, you know, just like any other job, you go back to work after a certain number of days and go back to work, yeah. Uh, do they have limitations on how many kids? No, no. no. <laughs> the military doesn't tell us. I mean, I've known families with eight, eight kids, I think, and that you see them on base driving in their huge van. Tunggu dulu. Jadi kira-kira ibu delapan anak ini cuti melahirkan berapa tahun ya? Coba saya dibantu jawab di komen di bawah ini. And so what's the benefit beside um, how about your school? <laughs> Did you get that from? So schooling, uh, okay, so I already had my degree when I joined. That's why I, I was able to go to officer training school. But if you, um, you know, through ROTC, sometimes you can get a full scholarship depending on what you're studying and what the needs of the military service are. Um, I was able to get my master's degree paid for. That was actually one of my assignments, which this was one of my best assignments. <laughs> Even as an Air Force member to go to the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey, California. 
And then part of my training was also to go to the Defense Language Institute to, for a year and a half to do nothing but learn Korean. And <laughs> it was pretty stressful, even though I'm Korean, <laughs> even though I'm Korean background and, and Korean heritage, you know. Are you fluent right now? I am not fluent. Korean is a very difficult language to maintain. In general, how much does a military personnel make? So it depends on your rank and how many years of service you have. And if you just Google military pay chart, you can see the pay chart for enlisted and officer. And so it varies, it changes all the time. But you know what it is really nice is, is the appreciation many communities will show by giving military discounts or on Veterans Day you get a free meal at certain restaurants and things like that. Oh. Um, and but a lot of places will offer significant military discounts. Oh, so one of the other benefits that I didn't mention was the GI Bill which was how I got to do the Calm Lead program for free, which was fantastic. Once you served a certain period of time, uh, the military would pay for your education, and depending where you are going to school, you get housing allowance to cover. This sounds really good, actually. It's like a lot of benefits to be in the U.S. military. Right. Normally, you have to wait till you're 65 before you can start collecting retirement, but if you're military retired, you get your retirement pay right away. Why do you think that, that you got a lot of benefits? Was it really bad to be in the military? You don't really get paid a whole lot. It's not a high paying job by any means. So people definitely don't do it for the money. But you know, salary and money is relative. If you come from a very poor family like I did, to me that was a lot, you know. For people who might come from wealthier families, they're not making very much, right? But you know, you do make sacrifices. You're on call 24 seven. You miss a lot of birthdays and anniversaries. I was separated from my son during my deployments, and that wasn't easy. When Can he, you say no when he was to deploy? No, you can't. You know that's part of your job. When you sign up, you know that you're basically owned by that service. When it gets to be too much, or when it's time to leave for whatever reason, you know you're able to leave. You're not held prisoner after you serve your time. Usually, when you sign that contract, you have a minimum of four years, depending on what you did. So, if you got pilot training, you have to pay back more years. If you got medical training because people can join and get trained as a medical doctor. They owe more years to the military to serve. Is there any compensation if anything happened to a military personnel? We call it SGLI. It's basically an insurance. So it can be between two hundred to $250,000 that the uh, surviving spouse will, will receive, and that's to help with the cost of uh, losing that um, salary, helping with burial costs and, and things like that. I've seen so many instances where the community, the military community comes together and they donate money and they create funds to help the children go to college if they lose a parent. Um, and there's a lot of different nonprofits and programs that help the military family that gets left behind when a military member passes away. I have a, a friend of mine who's a lesbian in Indonesia and then her girlfriend is in the military and then at one point they have to break up because they're screening the girlfriend phones in the military. Right. They're basically not allowed to be gay. So is it okay to be gay in the military in the U.S.? Yeah, so that has gone back and forth. Uh, dur during the Clinton era, they had what they called the don't ask, don't tell. LGBT community were able to serve in the community as long as they did not officially declare it. Later on, when Obama came into presidency, that was lifted which was seen as a big step for LGBT community to be able to serve. I don't know the details since I've gotten out. The current Trump administration has rescinded the, you know, um, taking back the don't ask, don't tell. And so I know there was a lot of uncertainty for um, LGBT community in the military after that. So I, I don't know what the latest is. I, I, um, but I, I do know they don't go as far as screening your phone that I'm aware they shouldn't be. That's a violation of our First Amendment rights, right? So as far as I know, it's not illegal to be LGBT and serving in the military right now, but I imagine it's not easy for them either. If I'm not wrong, Pete Buttigieg was in the Navy too, right? Who? Pete Buttigieg. Uh, the presidential he, candidate. Yeah, you know, I don't know his background, and his military background. Yeah. Should we Google it? <laughs> <laughs> I think he was in the Navy. Was he in the Navy? Okay. Sebelumnya, apakah teman-teman pernah mendengar nama Pete Buttigieg yang merupakan salah satu calon presiden di Amerika Serikat tahun 2020? Ia pernah melayani di Angkatan Laut di sini, juga pernah melalui perang di Afghanistan, 
dan ia menikahi seorang pria. Ya. Yeah. I didn't know he was gay. <laughs> I haven't been keeping up. I have friends who are gay in the military and they have since gotten out. And um, one in particular who's a very close f a friend, I consider a family friend, and he got out when he was a captain and he came out of the closet after, afterwards. But um, yeah, and it's because I have friends like that. It just makes me feel very sad, um, you know, the struggles that they have to live with you know, while, while in the military. I remember when I was a student at the Naval Postgraduate School, one of the professors um, came out with an email to all the students. Uh, What's saying, the email about? So the email basically um, said that he he, he was um, he was a man and that he had felt for years that he should be a woman. He was married with kids and everything, and and he was older. It wasn't like he was in his you know 30s or anything. He was he was up there in age. He's very very well respected, and he ended up going through a sex change and still continues to teach. And now she is still regarded as a very um, respected professor because she's very good at um, you know at what she does so and and you would think that in a conservative environment like the naval postgraduate school you know filled with military students that i really credit the leadership of the staff and faculty that sent out an email saying they would not tolerate any negative comments and and things and people fell in line and and they accepted it. But in reality, is there any discrimination for LGBTQ people in the military? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, the military community, people in the military come from all parts of the United States. And so the demographics of who, you know, what the military is made of is not homogenous by any means. There's, you know, people from different beliefs, backgrounds. And so we have people who are racist in the military, unfortunately. You know, I would hope that military experience would teach them not to be, but uh, you know, I've seen it. People, you know, especially since this administration has come into power, um, people that I didn't know have certain thoughts and beliefs have been very vocal about what they believe, which I'm very surprised. You know, you think some people who are educated and, and have traveled the world and seen different cultures wouldn't think the way they do, but they do, you know. How about military treating women? Did they treat yeah. you well? Um, I have to say I faced a lot of misogyny in the military, especially in my career field. There, it's a very male-dominated career field, aircraft maintenance. I think after the Me Too movement, I'm hoping that things have changed for the women in the military. I haven't, you know, I retired before that happened. So I think there's a lot of awareness and discussion about things like that, as well as just uh, awareness on diversity in general. But unfortunately, you know, we do have leaders that are toxic. <laughs> in the military chain of command. In which country do you think has the strongest armed force? The United States will be number one. Because when right. I saw your questions, I googled it. <laughs> so the top militaries were United States, China, and Russia. And what's the criteria of what they use, right? Usually the money that invested, the technology. I'm sure besides that's why China is probably one of the top. How the military members are trained. The education system, I believe the U.S. has one of the best because I know of other countries, militaries that I have worked for have modeled their systems. Um, so, so I served maybe a third of my career in, um, in Korea and I know the Korean Military Academy is modeled after the West Point um, Military Academy in the United States. North Korea like to to the military parade in Indonesia sometimes doing that yes. on the independent days. Is yeah. that something common here in the States? We do military parades to celebrate things like when people retire or when there's a change of command. So that's when a new commander comes and you have the parade of all the, the people that belong to that unit. It's tradition. So I think when North Korea has their parades, it's mainly part of their external uh, messaging to show the world that they are disciplined and they have this military. It's also part of their domestic messaging to ensure the, the general North Korean population that you know, we are strong, mighty military. Next questions. There is a website that offers Indonesian women dating American military guys. Is that for real? It sounds like a scam to me. Probably. I would not recommend that site. Um, I'm sure it happens, but I cannot uh, vouch for the credibility and, and uh, the quality of the service member that you <laughs> You know, actually, I have seen on dating apps that there are a lot of fake profiles 
with military members' pictures on that. So that's uh, just to be, you know, fairly warned. <laughs> Pertanyaan tentang dating app menutup perjumpaan kita kali ini. Jangan investasikan perasaan Anda sepenuhnya jika Anda belum pernah bertemu pasangan Anda tatap muka secara langsung. Saya juga akan mencantumkan website terpercaya dari FBI terkait romance scam di caption di bawah ini. Jika teman-teman tertarik tentang pembahasan sesuatu yang terkait dengan Amerika atau Indonesia bisa kirimkan message ke saya atau komen di bawah ini demikian video saya kali ini tapi jangan kemana-mana karena saya punya video yang menarik lainnya di sini dan jangan lupa subscribe dan sampai jumpa lagi getting allergies from those see you <laughs> I know it's getting to my eyes too um, LGBT community to be able to serve the train is coming, <laughs> the train is coming. The train, the train. <laughs> just stop it they um, did a survey on the most trusted organizations and institutions yeah